Syrian President Bashar al-Assad can stay. This is Skywatch TV for Thursday, December 17th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said after a meeting Tuesday in Moscow with Russian President Vladimir Putin that regime change in Syria is no longer a priority for the United States. This is a 180-degree reversal of our policy since 2011 when President Obama said Assad must go. Probably good news for the Christians in Syria who tend to support President Assad. He's from the minority Alawite sect, and so he looks to other minority groups in Syria, Christians, Druze, for support against the majority Sunni population. Uh, just like Christians in Iraq tended to support Saddam Hussein. Even though he was a dictator, he protected them from violent Muslim groups, groups that were unleashed after the United States invaded in 2003. An Iraqi lawmaker claims that the U.S. has a secret plan to lead a coalition force of 100,000 soldiers into Iraq to fight the Islamic State. Dr. Hanan El fatlawi who appears to be a rather outspoken politician, once quoted as saying that for every seven Shias who are killed in Iraq, she wanted seven Sunnis executed in their place. Uh, she posted to her Facebook wall last week that U.S. Senator John McCain told Iraq's Prime Minister Haider al Abadi at a recent meeting in Baghdad that uh, 10,000 American soldiers would join 90,000 troops from Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Jordan to basically invade Iraq and fight the Islamic State. Uh, al Abadi was reportedly upset, but... Senator McCain is said to have told him it was a done deal and non-negotiable. Now, this sounds a little far-fetched, and this story is coming from one news source, uh, the Iraq Press Agency. Haven't corroborated it from any other news source yet, but it really isn't all that different from what Senator McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham told CNN just a few days later in an interview that they gave CNN from Erbil. The two men were in the uh, Kurdish region of northern Iraq. And on Tuesday, Saudi Arabia made an announcement that could be preparations for such an invasion. The Saudi foreign minister announced the creation of a 34-nation Islamic military coalition to fight ISIS. Of course, Iran was not invited. They're Shia, Saudi Arabia's Sunni. But ironically, Iran already has boots on the ground in Iraq fighting the Islamic State. Things are getting more complicated and the fuse getting a little shorter in Iraq. We don't bring you these wars and rumors of war to ramp up fear and anxiety, but uh, history teaches us that we often don't see the preparations for a major conflict until the war is already upon us. Uh, Turkey, by the way, has finally withdrawn its troops from northern Iraq, that base near Mosul that I've been telling you about, or at least some of them. There was a military convoy that headed north from that base on Tuesday this week. Not clear whether those soldiers were actually going back to Turkey, or just deeper into Kurdish territory in northern Iraq. A plumber in Houston is suing a Ford dealership there after his old pickup truck showed up on the internet. A picture of his truck in Iraq with the F-250 having an anti-aircraft gun mounted on the bed and a flying an Islamic State flag. Unfortunately for Mark Oberholzer, once those pictures hit the internet, it was discovered that the dealership had never removed his company's signs from the doors. And his business began getting a lot of phone calls, many of which were not very polite. Um, some of them, in fact, he said, were people shouting at him in Arabic, although they might have been Syrians needing plumbing. But he, he was upset and he's suing because his business has been around for 32 years. And he says, this now is what my business is going to be remembered for. Uh, interestingly, a Carfax check of that 2005 Ford F-250 found that it was sold by auction or at auction to a company in Turkey, which is just more evidence that the Islamic State's supply lines extend across the Turkish border. It appears that Turkey's President Erdogan is willing to restore diplomatic relations with Israel. The two nations used to be fairly close allies, but things were strained in recent years by Erdogan and his political party, the AKP's shift toward a more Islamist stance. They really fell apart about five years ago when Turkey began supporting the so-called Freedom Flotilla boats that tried to run the blockade of the Gaza Strip. In 2010, Israeli soldiers boarded the Turkish ship uh, Mavi Marmara, and nine people were killed. Well, that incident appears to have been settled behind the scenes, diplomats between the two countries. And on Monday, President Erdogan told a reporter that talks have begun with Israel for the purchase of natural gas from the huge Leviathan natural gas field that Israel has in the eastern Mediterranean. 
Why would Turkey be interested in buying natural gas from a country it's been feuding with the last five years? Well, it's because right now Turkey buys more than half of its natural gas from Russia, and relations with Russia are even worse. This follows news last week of negotiations between Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his counterparts in Greece and Egypt. In fact, there was a meeting in Athens last week between Greek Prime Minister Alex Tsipras and Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. They are talking about a three-way partnership to develop natural gas wells in the Mediterranean Sea. Apparently, Turkey wants to make sure it gets a piece of that action. Again, with the development of these resources and the recent big oil discovery in the Golan Heights by uh, Israel, uh, conditions are developing there that could compel a desperate or greedy nation to begin something that turns into the prophesied wars of Psalm 83 or Ezekiel 38. Speaking of fossil fuels, um, more information about that Paris climate deal I told you about earlier this week, uh, you know, the deal with no mandatory emissions targets and no enforcement. Apparently, that was by design. Secretary of State John Kerry admitted on Fox News that if the deal actually had binding legal requirements, the United States Senate would have had to vote on it. This way, the Obama administration could just obligate the U.S. to the treaty without including Congress or the U.S. Constitution. The Obama administration may have found a way to get the United States to meet certain carbon emissions targets. Bloomberg Business reports that a spokesman for the government of New Zealand revealed that 18 nations, including the United States, will set up international markets to trade carbon credits. This is the so-called cap-and-trade plan that flopped here in the United States in 2010. The Chicago Climate Exchange operated for seven years, folded in early 2010. Some of the investors sued, claiming fraud. Cap and trade is a deal where the government sets a limit on how much carbon uh, power plants, uh, industrial plants can release into the atmosphere. And if they go over their allotted amount, they have to buy carbon allowances. Theoretically, this provides a financial incentive for companies to produce less carbon, put less into the atmosphere. It essentially becomes a tax on industrial output and energy consumption, drives up the costs for producers. Well, they're not going to just take that out of their profit margin. In order to maintain their profits, they raise prices. So guess who actually winds up paying this carbon tax? You and me. It also leads to creative ways of gaming the system, like carbon offsets, allowances for producers for doing things like planting trees, paying other people to do things like plant trees, agreeing not to do certain things, getting carbon credits to not build a new plant, or to stop doing something that's already illegal. For example, in 2009, uh, an oil company in Nigeria, where the companies typically flare off 40% of the natural gas that they find, uh, which is illegal in Nigeria, but not enforced, a company announced a plan to build power plants using that gas that they were just burning off and would receive one and a half million carbon credits per year. Essentially, getting paid to stop doing something that was already illegal in the country. That's like paying a criminal not to, not to rob you. This is the insanity that the radical green movement leads to. And why we focus on this, because it is technocracy in action, a desire to control your life and mine by controlling how much energy we can consume, which affects everything from how we heat our homes to how we get to work. A bomb hoax on Tuesday meant a day off of school for the Los Angeles School District. Over 640,000 students got a day off because of an emailed threat to the uh, public school district. New York City officials received a similar threat on the same day, but they determined that it was uh, a hoax. But in Los Angeles, which is, of course, very close to San Bernardino, uh, in the current environment, they decided uh, to err on the side of caution. And uh, one L.A. student posted to Facebook that getting a day off of school was the bomb. A U.S. Army National Guard soldier pleaded guilty Monday to conspiring with his cousin to attack a military base outside Chicago, their goal reportedly to kill over 100 people. 22-year-old specialist Hassan Edmonds and his cousin, 30-year-old Jonas Edmonds, were arrested in March at Chicago's Midway Airport, attempting to fly to Cairo, Egypt. They'd been in contact with an FBI agent online 
posing as a recruiter for the Islamic State based out of Libya. A tenured professor at a Christian college has been suspended for wearing a Muslim headscarf. She said it was to support her Muslim neighbors. That isn't what got her put on administrative leave. It was her Facebook post explaining why she was doing it, in which she claimed that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Now, it's one thing for Pope Francis to say it. It's another for an associate professor of political science to say it at an evangelical Christian college. Christians believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Muslims deny the divinity of Jesus. It's very simple. Unless we accept that God contradicts himself because the Quran and the Hadiths contradict the Bible, we have to conclude that Muslims, by definition, are worshiping something other than the God of the Bible. Coming up next Tuesday on Skywatch TV, as we approach Christmas, we talk about Jesus in his own words. Chuck Missler is our guest on Skywatch TV, talking about his new book, I, Jesus. It's a powerful conversation. It's an emotional conversation. I think you'll really enjoy it. Tuesday night, Chuck Missler on Skywatch TV on the Christian Television Network. That's 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, UTC minus 5. Direct TV Channel 376, Dish Network Channel 267, and the Glory Star Satellite Channel 117. And still time, as while supplies last, uh, to receive these gifts in time for the Christmas holiday for your financial support of Skywatch TV in any amount. Ebenezer, The Final Years of Scrooge, a creative and uh, entertaining novel from Donna Howell. The three CD World Christmas Collection, three hours of music in Latin, African, and Celtic styles, and a keepsake ornament for your tree. Again, our gift to you for your gift of any amount during the month of December while supplies last, and U.S. residents only, please. Instructions on how to donate posted at skywatchtv.com. Here's where you find the random thoughts that I put out on the internet, Twitter, Facebook, and my website. And of course, if you have comments, questions, or suggestions, send those to me at dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. Tomorrow, Sci Friday, my best friend, my wife, Sharon K. Gilbert, joins me as we talk about the science stories of the week. And on Monday, as we approach Christmas, we uh, invite Tom Horn into the studio. And we will recap some of the big trends and news items of 2015. Take a look ahead at 2016. That will take the place of our regular update on Monday here on Skywatch TV. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. The holidays are on us, and this Christmas, Skywatch TV can help you give the gift of preparedness to the ones you love. How better to show your love to your family than to buy something that will help them when their electricity goes out, when everything fails, and we all know that there's a possibility of that yep. happening. This is the time to buy, because if you go to our store, you'll find the buy this, get that free special. And trust me, the buy this items, <laughs> They're already discounted, so you're going to save money on that. And you get a wonderful item, in addition, free. That's right. Go to skywatchtvstore.com and look for the Christmas specials. Now, as a news junkie, uh, I'm really excited about some of the crank radios. When times get tough <laughs> and you need to know what's going on. Are they just for can, cranks? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's perfect for me then, because you can, without batteries, be able to find out exactly what's going on. They're crank radios, including a two-way radio, so you can communicate with friends and family in an emergency. I think that's incredible. We've got a hand crank radio at home that we use a lot. I hope it never happens, but right. more than likely the day is going to come, even if it's just a, a power outage from a storm, you're going to need something to hear the, the weather on. We've got seed kits, yes. emergency ration kits, uh, Berkey water filters. I mean, it's the, all the things you wanted to get for prepping and you wanted to save money or you want to give to your family yeah. members, now's the time to buy. And many of those seed kits are heirloom seeds, the kind of things that you don't typically get when you go to the store to buy seeds, seeds that you can basically, uh, when when the plant ripens, you can save some of those seeds and plant them again next you year. You can. It's almost a buy once, have them forever sort of thing, if you just save from year to year. And they're non-GMO. Exactly. Plenty of other items in the store, including more information, books that tell you about how to prepare and plan for times that uh, are troublesome. And uh, certainly that would describe the age we're living in right now. Buy this. Get that free. You gotta love it. Yep. Give the gift of preparedness this holiday season. Skywatch TV, skywatchtvstore.com. And again, Merry Christmas from Skywatch TV.